When I was about nine years old, my family and I moved from Florida, where I was born and raised, all the way up to New York, which is quite a shift, especially uh, coming out at a fairly young age. Anybody who's been to either place knows that they are quite different in terms of climate and uh, culture in different ways. And as a, a kid, as a child, I sort of remember flying over those two places and noticing very distinct differences. Where I grew up in Florida, the developments and houses were all very patterned, uh, condos around lakes, complexes, that sort of thing. Whereas New York, I was, I was starkly aware of the difference, at least out on Long Island where we wound up landing and living in terms of there were a lot more woods and country-esque type um, communities out there at the time. And so in terms of climate, uh, in terms of location, even at a young age, I, I noticed that to be very different. But one thing that I sort of noticed felt the same in some ways, at least in the summer, was going to the beach. And in New York, there's very different types of beaches. If you go to a North Shore beach, they are typically rocky beaches along the, the northern coast of Long Island, whereas they, they feel more New Englandy almost in some ways, whereas if you go to the South Shore, much more East Coast vibe in terms of clear sands and, uh, you know, wide open ocean down there. And I remember as a as a child feeling that this felt like home because it reminded me of Florida, the, the beach and the, the sand and the waves and everything that you associate with a, a classically iconic vision, right? We all have sometimes stock images that come up if you say, well, picture a house or picture a mountain or picture a beach, right? And the beach sort of did that still, even thousands of miles away or at least over a thousand miles away, right? still felt the same in in many ways. And so I feel as if I've always had this sort of reverence for the beach and for the ocean and how wide and massive and interconnected it is, right? I mean, you can put a little toy boat in the water in New York and someday it may make it down to Florida or vice versa. It's expansive. It's It's almost endless in that way because it's connected from one location to the other. So, again, I was always fascinated, uh, even without even knowing why, I think, early on. I was fascinated by the beach and sort of the, the, the massiveness of it in terms of being greater than us. Which brings us to today. And today, as we may have heard, or as you may have heard, the beach is not quite what it used to be, <laughs> which is certainly an understatement. You know, w working or teaching uh, college, specifically lecturing at a research university, it's it's great in terms of the exposure to some of these issues. There's there's so many different focuses and, and different projects that students are involved in with their specific majors and specific programs within their fields of studies, study. And at the research level or with the research focus, it's really interesting to see what students are focusing on in terms of the environment and ecological studies of, of different sorts. So it's really a pleasure to be able to participate in that and to be able to explore that and, and explore sort of what what they're studying and what they're working on. And it's been particularly interesting to see over the past, I don't know, I would say maybe five years or so. I've been teaching at at this one research institution for about five years now, how the issue of global waste, specifically global plastic pollution waste, and even more specifically, ocean global plastic pollution, has really, in some ways, finally proliferated in terms of our awareness of this issue, which I think with any issue is obviously vital, right? So many issues throughout history we sort of know about them or we're somewhat aware of them for many, 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 many years, oftentimes, sometimes generations, right? 
but we wait to act on them. And the question is always why, you, you know, what is that, that push, that spark that really ignites us to, to actually doing something about an issue that we may have known was an issue all along. But the question is, did enough of us know that it was an issue all along? Did enough of us feel that it was enough of an issue, right? Did enough of the right people in the right places with the right power sort of know and have the ability and wherewithal to do something about it? And again, I, I've seen this awareness um, in many ways finally hit what I would consider perhaps to be a critical mass over the last half decade or so, five, six years maybe. And what I mean by that is that early on in my teaching career, you would get the occasional paper, even from students within these fields, about some of these issues. And it, it's interesting to reflect back upon that because the sort of apocalyptic nature of what's happening with our oceans in terms of uh, ocean plastic and plastic pollution in general, the, the science has always, and I shouldn't say always when we're talking about these issues, but the science has for quite some time now sort of clearly identified the nature of this issue and how serious this issue is and how it, it grows or how it's continuing to grow. Yet only it feels like in the last couple of years, maybe few years, has action actually begun to unfold in terms of dealing with some of these these problems that, again, we've we've sort of been aware of maybe for a while, but we haven't quite worked to start actually tackling them yet. And again, the question is always why. And I think part of the reason is this idea of building towards a critical mass. So again, it's been interesting to see from that perspective how, yeah, I would get an occasional paper here or there early on about, you know, um, free range floating plastic pollution, such as bottles and straws and that sort of thing. And, you know, becoming more specific from there in terms of um, you know, you even think back going to 20, 30 years back, there was always, you know, sort of campaigns against those, those, uh, beer can rings, right? The plastic beer can rings that birds and those sorts of things would get tangled in. And, uh, that was a big issue and you don't see those much anymore. So th this issue has always been, uh, sort of in the consciousness since the first examples of it, right? But in terms of a mass movement, we haven't quite gotten there yet. So it's been interesting to see some of these further specific instances. And there's no shortage of them. In fact, if you were just to go to Google right now and type in ocean plastic pollution, uh, not only will you have no shortage of different types of articles in terms of the different types of issues, but you'll have very sort of harrowing ones about animals, uh, you know, different types of sea life, marine life, choking on different types of plastic, and just, you know, scientists find all sorts of horrible things of, of marine creatures that drown in discarded nets or just their stomachs are full of all types of plastic. It's really awful if you just go and look it up. And again, it's this concern with so many other environmental concerns of well, how do we do something about something that the consequences aren't immediately clear or even necessarily clear at all to outside observers, right? I mean, my point being that if you're trying to push for national legislation in America to ban certain types of plastic in packaging or consumer consum consumption, right, like straws or whatever the case may be, bags, plastic bags is a big one around the country, which in fact a lot of individual municipalities have begun to ban. But again, if you're trying to push for a more massive overhaul, how do you make that case to half the country that lives more than 30 miles away from a coastline? Right? To the, to the common, common folk who maybe never even go to the beach, maybe have never even been to the beach, right? They just don't live near one. Nor do they have the interest, right? They just don't like going to the beach. How do you convince them that this impacts them? How do you how do you show that? How do you 
qualify that or quantify that? How do you really put a value on that in terms of how it's affecting them in a negative way? It's not easy to do. And I myself don't know how to do it, right? Like how do you how do you quantify how much each ba- each bag, plastic bag floating in the ocean in the middle of the Pacific Ocean affects a soybean farmer in the middle of the country or a corn farmer in Iowa? What is that cost? Is it one cent to their paycheck? Is it two cents? Is it three cents? Is it one one thousandth of a cent? I don't know. I don't have these answers, right? But it is something. And with all the other issues going on in our world, how do you make that sort of a, a focus? How do you how do you draw focus to something like that? I think that's sort of my point here. And m- sort of my my philosophy when it comes to the topic that I want to discuss a little bit more, which is not just beach cleaning, but why bother beach cleaning, right? Because if we step back and we we take it from this perspective that, well, nothing matters unless bigger change happens, then what difference does it make if I go out and clean a beach? Which, full disclaimer, full disclosure, rather, (laughs) I I do. Um, In fact, I have for quite some time now, the past couple of years, pretty regularly, and again, I have the fortune of living a few minutes from a beach. But when I think about sort of the reasons why I actually do it, it's not entirely entirely 100% logical. I mean, many people who I tell that I regularly beach clean, they sort of, I feel in some ways, get the sense that I'm trying to be a good person, and I guess that is it. But I feel like there's got to be more to it than just that, right? Like, I want to do something good because it's not just the good thing to do, but it's helpful, right? It's actually causing a net positive to our world, our ecosystems, and ourselves, right? Ultimately. There's so many specifics you can point to in terms of really, again, asking this question, does it really matter? Does it really make a difference, right? One person cleaning a beach, you pick up five pounds of plastic. Does that make a dent in the global plastic pollution? I've tried to calculate that, and the answer is not really, right? Hardly at all. It's a nominal difference, right? But again, this gets into a larger question with many other issues right which is well if everybody feels this way or acts this way of course that's why things are the way that they are i mean you can use this same situation apply it to any other topic where people sometimes question the futility of their impact and voting is the most obvious one that comes to mind right i mean how many people listening have not voted before because you thought to yourself and rightly so well, if I don't do it, what's the big deal, right? A bunch of other people are still going to do it. What difference is my one vote going to make? Again, that's in many ways a logical argument, a logical thought process. But there's something there's something deeper at work in terms of not, I don't want to say giving in to that philosophy, but there does seem to be something inherently a bit nihilistic about it a bit sort of despondent almost and defeated. And I feel like we need the opposite right now. I mean, you could probably say that at any point in human history, right? It's easy to go back at at any point and look at issues that really seem paramount at the time. But this is how I feel about many of these issues. And, And again, the environment's certainly a big one right now. You know, I'm working on a beach cleaning guidebook at the moment that I hope to have published soon, but we'll see. There's always more to add. That's the thing. Whenever I think I'm just about done with it, oh, I, I've said everything that you could possibly say in a beach clean guidebook. I go out and beach clean and I think of something else or I find something else or I see something else or I do something else or 
again, it, it's, it's exhaustive in terms of the avenues you can go down and the advice you can give. And that's sort of what re really made me start thinking that there's, there's more to this than just, you know, trying to volunteer, trying to help out, trying to be a good person. Because I realized that there was so much to say about it in terms of the actual tangible impacts and the tangible effects that you can, you can see. So I think we get caught in this, I don't want to call it a trap so much, but I think it's trap-like thinking where sometimes we feel as if, well, if I don't go out and clean the beach today, who will know? Who will know the difference? If I go for a walk in the park instead, or I sit at home watching Netflix, heck, I could sit at home watching Netflix and tweet out that I went to clean the beach. And, you know, a bunch of people may say, great, high five, applause. I mean, that's a, a pretty cynical, disturbing thing to do. Um, but again, conceivably, right? My point being, where is the impact actually felt? Where is it actually seen? And, you know, I think about the, the this idea that you can make a difference, even if it's a small one, right? I mean, I think this is ultimately as well, maybe this is just me, this is just my philosophy, but it's also why I love teaching, right? It's like, if I teach or don't teach, is that going to change the world? Well, maybe, maybe not, right? I mean, who knows who I impact or influence teaching? And who knows in what ways? Maybe, hopefully, ideally, I would like to think, help people succeed in their careers, find their passions, have better lives overall. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe one of my students winds up being the next president, a president who bans <laughs> all sorts of plastics. Wouldn't that be ironic, huh? That's something I could write about, maybe. As a writer, my mind's always sort of going to those those ironies, which, again, irony doesn't always have to be negative. I don't think so, by definition, at least. Maybe it does. Well, maybe I can I can change that definition. I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself, obviously, though. Again, that's sort of my point. You don't know what those impacts might be. To assume the impact just from what you can see, I think, is, is shortchanging the work that you're doing in life. And if it's good work that you're doing, it's genuine work that you're doing, well, why not enjoy it and why not have others enjoy it? And so that's what I've tried to do with, with my beach cleaning over the past couple of years. Again, you know, just to reiterate sort of this, this process or this realization, if we can be so bold as to call it that. You know, I used to go to the beach just, just to collect beach glass because, again, like I said, it sort of felt like a, a place that, again, whether you're in New York or in Florida, the beach is the beach. And, again, there may be differences but there's always shore, there's always water. You know, there's common elements that all humans can sort of relate to as as creatures that many, 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 many iterations ago came from the water. I think there's there's still something there in terms of how we, we relate to it and almost calls to us in a way. Maybe I'm being a bit poetic, but that's, there's something there that I, I definitely feel along those lines. And so I used to go to the beach to collect beach glass because I, 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 if anybody who's ever found beach glass or, glass or collected it, I mean, just look it up online. Some of it's marvelous. It's fantastic. It's, it's so beautiful. And it was during these cleans that I began first noticing trash and then more and more trash. And again, when we say beach trash, there's all sorts of beach trash. And I found everything. You know, maybe I'll link in this description to my my beach cleaning group page. That's actually a good idea as well as my Instagram because I post all sorts of wacky finds on my Instagram. And again, I go out beach cleaning probably on average at least once a week uh, because I live so close to the beach. And there's no shortage of strange, bizarre items, most of which, once more, are plastic, which are quite insidious. Plastics, obviously, are made from all sorts of oils that degrade into the environment and are poisoning as well as can directly harm marine life. 
that gets tangled in wires and, and nets and other pieces like that or digests them. So there's a lot of inherent dangers in those types of, of objects or items. Um, and I find all sorts of strange and bizarre such pieces. And I, I post them on my Beach Clean Instagram. I think I forget my, my, my account name. It's something like Prof Beach Clean or something like that. Anyways, <laughs> I was even actually showing, because like I said at the one school I teach that's a research institution, I was showing some of my finds to some of my students who were in marine sciences and they were, <laughs> I, I think they were quite surprised by some of the things that you find. Everything from the classic plastic water bottle that says recycle right on the side to tangled wires, as I said, to just these big Barbie dolls lying in the sand, melting away, and everything in between. Caps, pens, batteries, again, not just plastic, all sorts of items that, you know, once more don't belong on the beach. But where do they belong, right? I mean, that's a good question. When I go out to beach clean, I may find or collect five pounds or fewer. I may collect 20 pounds sometimes and have multiple bags that I'm hauling back to my car. And that's oftentimes another question I get asked, like, well, you know, what's the point of doing all this, right? What are you going to do with all this trash? Just throw it out? There's no good answer for that question, unfortunately. But again, it's not about sort of superlatives here, right? Sort of trying to clean up beach trash and saying, well, I can't recycle any of it, so what's the point? It's all dirty and broken. Throw it back in the ocean. Well, that also seems a bit sort of extreme, right? So I try to recycle what I can. And again, that depends on a case-by-case -case basis. I've gone to the beach before where there were so many fresh bottles that were clean enough to, you know, wash out and recycle that I get a whole bag just full of those, you know, 10, 15, 20 bottles, which is, you know, that's not nothing. It's again, in of itself, maybe not going to solve our problems, but hey, it's a start, right? Whereas other times I go and it's all just broken bits, none of which are recyclable, you know, either because they're too dirty or too degraded and they have to go in the trash. Again, is that solving the issue? Well, no. Is it better than leaving it floating free for fish and other animals to digest and choke on and die and poison their environments? Maybe a little, right? Putting all that in a landfill, again, is a night deal at least it's contained but even then it will seep maybe into water supply so again it's not a perfect solution but it is something even if it's a little something but for most of us what else can we hope to do you know i'm working on like i said the speech clean guidebook and i forget which chapter it is it's one of the early chapters i think it's uh titled something like why you should give a shit of course, I replace that explicative with um, keyboard symbols. Self-censorship, I know, but I've got to make it available for a wide audience, right? And I say something, I have opening quotes at the beginning of all the chapters. And I think it's either for the first chapter or the second chapter. The opening quote is something like, these quotes are just my, my own ramblings, of course, as you know whether listening through this podcast or attending any of my lectures. There's no shortage of those uh, rambles. But it's something along the lines of, wait, but I want to watch Netflix. And then I say something along the lines of, luckily, Netflix will be around later for you. Unfortunately, our planet might not be. And again, that's sort of, hyperbole in terms of being a bit dramatic, right? But you get the point, I think, right? What I really should say is the earth as we know it might not be around. So again, there's no self-delusion in terms of, oh, I'm going to go clean the beach and I'm part of the solution and 
you know, this is the, this is the first step in in solving this problem. I don't feel that way about cleaning the beach, and I don't think that's necessarily the most truthful or honest way to feel about it. But again, it's like anything else in your own life, right? You have to have your own house in order in order to go out into the world and sort of function in a way where you can you can spread positivity, right? So to me, I, I feel as if cleaning the beach is sort of a part of that, right? And it's been good to see. I mean, I've gotten a lot of friends involved. I've done many events, and I've had fun with it. One of the things we do over the winter, again, when I say we, it's because I've created a, a small group, mostly on Facebook, but there's, there's um, a lot of members, and by members, that's, of course, people who just signed up, but there's a couple of managers, too, who have really gotten involved, and that's really cool to see, and we'll do over the winter certain events, we'll do... And especially in the winter, hot chocolate events or fancy coffee events. So we try to have fun with it. And again, it does it does feel good. And I've done other events too, and I'm working on other events. Actually, just the other day, I had a student at the university email me wanting to do a collaboration event with his, I believe, rowing team or something like that, which sounds fantastic, right? We have boats. We have oars. There is trash. Let's go out into the harbor and find some. Right? We're going to be doing these things anyways. Let's find some trash. I mean, it's not a bad way to spend an afternoon. Let me put it to you that way. So I think the why, the answer to the why bother beach cleaning question is actually a relatively simple one. And I think you can answer it with another question, which is why the hell not bother, right? What is it that you're doing instead? Now, I should emphasize the fact that I, again, understand the situation of lives different than my own, right? As somebody who works many jobs, I understand there are others who work even more and don't have time to go clean a beach, right? They don't have access to get to a beach even, whether for whatever reasons, right? There's all sorts of reasons why that might be the case. And that's, you know, that's the situation for many people. So I understand that, right? But for those of you who do have that capability, why not take advantage of it, right? Why not use the resources you have, the access to accomplish something like going and doing something good for your your local community? There's a chapter actually later on in, in my Beach Clean guidebook I'm working on, and it's specifically titled, uh, I believe, well, what do I do if I don't live near a beach? And... Again, going back to this idea of the interconnected nature of the environment, as I was saying, the ocean is, when you get to it, it feels like it's everywhere and endless as well, right? Well, a lot of plastic pollution and plastic waste that winds up in the ocean comes from inland. You know, I've read some crazy estimates about how most, and again, I don't know how accurate this is. I think this was according to the United Nations, though. But most plastic pollution actually comes from rivers that run into the ocean. And I'm not surprised by that if that is the case. And I certainly know for sure that a lot of plastic pollution does, in fact, come from rivers, runoff, sewer drains. Again, this is why it's a more complicated issue than it might seem at first glance. Many people, when I meet on the beach or talk to about beach cleaning, they initially assume oh, it's horrible how people just leave all their crap at the beach. I would never do that. And I agree. But I don't even know if that's where... Maybe most of it does come from people leaving it at the beach, in certain at certain beaches, but 
I see all the time toppled trash cans on the road that blow over from the wind. Again, stuff rolling into sewer drains that run off into the harbor, which, you know, empties out to the ocean. This is all in- interconnected. And so while it might take some time for a bottle left on the side of the street somewhere, nowhere near an ocean, to break down and get to the ocean, it may still inevitably wind up there. So there's plenty that you can do still in your own area, in your own community. Even if you don't live actually near a beach. And I'm a big fan of leading by example. Again, not because I think it makes me feel righteous or better than people who don't. But I think it it sort of works to just show people that this is just something that you can also do. Anybody can do it. If, again, you have the access and, and the means and the ability. But you have to ask and assess that for yourself, obviously, right? And if you do, then you can. You can do something like that. That, you know, I'll, I'll say it one last time. We do sometimes, I feel, as people, always sort of want the next thing, right? I mean, how often do you feel that way with your phone, right? We want the next best one. And we sometimes, that that's, it becomes a self-defeating philosophy because we feel that way about other goals. Well, if this isn't going to solve the issue, then why am I bothered doing it, right? Well, to the marine life in your community, it makes a difference. Again, they might not know it, but I might be losing my mind thinking that <laughs> whenever I see the deer or the birds, the seagulls, and turtles. I think they know me by now because I'm there, you know, a couple th- days a week. They see me all throughout the year. But who knows, right? I, I, I'm i not going to spend the rest of our time here getting into the mind of, of those types of animals. But, you know, the other day I was cleaning and I saw a seagull hopping about, I don't know, maybe 25 yards away from me, pretty close. And so I tried to get closer because I was wondering why it was hopping. And I noticed around one of its legs, it had a tangle of um, fishing line. And as I got nearer, Normally you get close enough and they start to shift away and eventually they take off. And this one sort of looked back at me and I just felt this odd moment of, if only I could say something to this bird, right? If only I could convince it to let me close enough to, you know, cut it free from that that wire. Which, of course, you know, I tried to get closer and it eventually flew away to show it that, you know, I'm I'm not its enemy, but I can still help it in other ways, right? I can still help the other birds by picking up the next tangle of fishing wire, which I did that day. I picked up two or three other tangles of cut fishing wire that had just been left behind discarded, so. You know, one of the main philosophies in in teaching in terms of student engagement is that you try to do what's best for each individual while also doing what's best for the whole group. But there's always some students that you look back on and say, if only I could have done a little bit different and help them a little bit more. But you think moving forward, well, maybe now I, I know how to keep working towards those those ends, those more productive ends. And you get better at it. And so with beach cleaning, it's not an exact parallel to that, but it's similar in the sense that, well, yeah, I, I don't get depressed by seeing a bird like that and feeling as if, ah, oh, man, if only I had gotten a tangle of fishing wire earlier, you know, that poor bird 
would have been freer to not have to live his life that way, right? But there's a ton of other birds, possibly, who don't have to deal with that now. And so again, I think those those little differences, it all comes down to perspective. But from my perspective, it, it means it means something. And maybe that's as important as it meaning anything, right? Even if we don't know exactly exactly to the degree that it is important, we, we, we feel like it still is, is something. It is still a net positive, right? And what is life ideally other than a bunch of little successes, a bunch of little net positives? To me, I think that's how you ideally, hopefully, reach a point of what I would call fulfillment, right? Feeling okay with, with who you are and how things are because you know, well, at least I'm doing something. And so again, I mean, I'm a big advocate for larger scale pushes for environmental advocacy and, and dealing with some of these issues in terms of uh, manufacturing and how plastics are used in industry and, and recycled and, and all these other elements. But, you know, we have to do what we can individually as well. One criticism, for example, of the, the straw bans that you've seen nationwide is the fact that, well, straws only make up less than 1% of total plastic pollution. And I think that's a good criticism because, again, it's not to say that that's a bad thing to get rid of plastic straws and replace them with steel straws or paper straws or whatever. But it's to criticize that the work isn't done. It's not time to wipe our hands clean and say, look at this battle we won. Job, mission accomplished. The plastic straws are gone. The turtles will no longer choke on them. Look at all this good we've done. Yeah, that's fantastic. But we got to keep going. Again, we got to keep going as long as there's more to do. And so whether that's impacting, again, the local environment or, you know, just leading by example to some degree and having others join in and do their start their own beach cleaning projects and groups. I mean, the other day I was beach cleaning and I think a group of about 15, 20 high schoolers showed up and fantastic, right? I immediately, I saw them going one way down the beach. I said, I'm going the other. You know, one of the things I include in my Beach Clean guidebook are these types of statistics of what would happen if every beachgoer collected a pound of plastic a year or picked up even just one straw. And the effects are massive. I was working on one the other day about getting to the moon and back by stacking straws or something like that. But I hadn't quite worked out the math on that. So maybe that's something I'll, I'll figure out for the guidebook moving forward. In conclusion, I guess what I want to leave you with is this idea that you're not alone in what you do and what you do is meaningful. Every decision connects to another, right? And so we, sh we shouldn't forget that. We should hold on to that. So why bother beach cleaning? Well, because Professor Labs told you to. And it's actually good exercise, believe it or not. A lot of good lateral movement. I actually use a trash picker, so I don't bend as much as I used to. But it's still, hey, if you're going for a walk anyways, which I think more people should do, get out and walk. I think it's crazy not to bring a bag or find a bag and pick up some trash while you're at it. You're already walking. And I see this all the time, people just walking past all this trash and I'm like 
I kind of want to, you know, (laughs) just give them a bag, which sometimes I do when they talk to me. I offer them a bag and they're, they're very grateful usually. And I've seen more and more other people showing up, just walking on the beach with the bag, picking up what they find. And I think, again, that's, that's great. Not the solution in of itself, but it is, again, one step that each of us can take together. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us here today. And just a couple of things before we go. The first of which is I think the podcast is now available on Spotify as well as on Podbean. And it should be available soon on iTunes. Uh, I submitted it to be on iTunes and it's in a review process. God's help us. I don't know what that means. If they listen to this, maybe they'll approve it. But I'll update you to let you know. But it's at least available on Spotify, I'm pretty sure as well as here on Podbean. And we also now have a Patreon page, so if you'd like to support us at all, check it out. There's some bonuses that we offer through Patreon, and you can access that. Uh, I'll include a link in the description, but it's also on our main Podbean site, and that's at patreon.com slash professorlabs. But again, I'll link that in the description for you to check out more. Other than that, if you have ideas for topics or comments about Anything I got wrong in here, because I imagine there's a lot. You know, I think I said last episode in our first or second episode that I often offer my students extra credit for correcting me, and they are quick to do so. So if I say erroneous facts, erroneous statements, please do correct me, because in my experience, that's how I've learned best, is being called out for those things, so... But other than that, again, thank you very much for joining us and hope to see you next time. Until then, well, hopefully, see you on the beach.